Stan Lee is a pop culture titan. With a career that spans eight decades, he's been around long enough to see characters he co-created become household names, a roster that includes Spider-Man, the X-Men, the Hulk, and more. His journey has been remarkable, but it might not be what you'd expect from the smiling spokesman for Marvel Comics. Stan the Delivery Man Lieber Lee was born Stanley Martin Lieber, the son of Jewish immigrants from Romania. As a student, he worked odd jobs to help his family get through the tail end of the Great Depression, including delivering sandwiches in Manhattan, a far cry from his dreams of writing sci-fi novels. Not long after graduating high school at 16, however, he got a job at a company run by one of his relatives, Martin Goodman, a little place called Timely Comics. Stan Lieber No More When he joined up with Timely Comics in 1939, Stan Lieber thought that his job as an errand boy would be a stepping stone to a career as a novelist. Needless to say, things turned out a little differently. In 1941, Stan was assigned to write a text-only story as filler for Captain America Comics No. 3. For this story, Captain America foils the traitor's revenge, he used the pseudonym Stan Lee, intending to save his real name for his future career as a serious novelist. Within months, the imaginative new kid was off creating superheroes of his own, with names like Jack Frost and Father Time. Just before Lee turned 19, Captain America's creators Joe Simon and Jack Kirby left over a dispute with Goodman, and Lee was named interim editor. Before his career could really take off, though, World War II would force him into a brief detour. Soldier Stan Stan Lee joined the U.S. Army in 1942, where his talent with words led to assignments writing training manuals and slogans for posters. Before long, he ended up in the Army's training film division writing scripts, and, as he would later recount, he was one of only nine people in the entire Army whose title was listed as playwright. While serving in the Army, Stan continued to send in scripts for Timely's popular titles, and when the war ended, Lee, only 23 years old, reclaimed the job as editor and wouldn't give it up for decades. But not before thinking about quitting entirely. Reinventing Superheroes By the 1950s, controversy over the content in comic books had been raging for years, to the point where publishers like Mad Magazine's Bill Gaines were called to testify before the Senate. The result was the Comics Code, a strict set of regulations that put several publishers out of business and limited the kinds of stories creators could tell. Faced with declining sales, a lack of respect for comics, and the restrictions of the code, Lee was demoralized enough to quit. Fortunately, his wife Joan convinced him to try something new. Inspired by their competition's recent success with putting their biggest heroes into a team book called Justice League of America, Stan formed a team of his own, partnering with Jack Kirby to create the Fantastic Four. In November of 1961, the rebranded Marvel Comics launched with Fantastic Four No. 1, introducing readers to a superhero team that combined sci-fi origins with relatable personalities. In between battling supervillains and interdimensional threats, the team bickered, fought, and acted like you'd expect regular flawed people with superpowers to act. The immediate success led Goodman to order basically as many new characters in comic books as Lee, Kirby, and the other Marvel artists could come up with. Before long, the Marvel bullpen was known to the world, with Stan the Man Lee's jovial editorials making him the friendly face of the Marvel Age of Comics. Amazing Fantasies As a kid, Stan Lee had been a fan of a pulp magazine character called The Spider, which gave him the idea to approach Goodman about introducing a team character with spider-themed powers. Lee would later recall that this idea was met with some pretty big skepticism from Goodman. Nobody wanted me to do it. My publisher, when I suggested the idea, he said, that's the worst thing I ever heard of. Why? People hate spiders. Rather than risking a whole new series on the wild idea, Lee instead decided to try his character out in Amazing Fantasy, a series that was due to be canceled anyway. With Kirby proving to be a bad fit for the character, artist Steve Ditko took a crack at it instead, and the world was introduced to Peter Parker, the Amazing Spider-Man. After Amazing Fantasy No. 15 went flying off the shelves, Spidey was quickly given his own series, paving the way for another wave of Marvel heroes. Marvel Hits Hollywood By the 21st century, the Marvel Cinematic Universe would be breaking box office records, but Marvel's and Stan's original road to Hollywood was actually a lot more difficult than they expected. In the 70s, there were plenty of attempts at bringing Marvel properties to television. The Amazing Spider-Man debuted on CBS as a TV movie in 1977, and while the technical limitations were obvious, fans seemed thrilled to have a live-action version of The Web Slinger airing in primetime. It didn't last, though. CBS pulled the plug after 13 episodes because of its more successful Marvel adaptation, The Incredible Hulk. Featuring Bill Bixby as Dr. Banner and Lou Ferrigno as his rampaging alter ego, The Incredible Hulk aired for five seasons and helped to cement the character in the pop culture consciousness. Unfortunately, the attempts at launching Doctor Strange and Captain America through TV movies didn't work out, and Marvel's hard luck got worse when the entire comics industry hit a slump in the 90s. 
Through it all, though, Stan continued to be an ambassador for the brand, and while it had been years since he'd actually been an editor at Marvel, a new wave of Marvel films in 2000 led to what has today become his signature, the well-placed cameo. Superheroes in New York cameo break. The Face of Marvel since the beginning of Marvel's rise to pop culture dominance over 50 years ago, Stan Lee's face and personality have only grown more associated with the brand. He's lent his voice to video games and cartoons, appeared in almost every Marvel movie, and even writes the occasional new comic story for Marvel. It all became possible because a creative kid with an illustrious background in sandwich delivery and a struggling young industry took a chance on each other. And because of Joan Lee, the greatest advice giver there ever was. Excelsior! You know... I guess one person can make a difference. Enough said.